I can always make time for criticising new atheism and YouTube scepticism. And I've made a lot of videos on this stuff. You guys will know, especially if you followed me over the last year or so. I've talked about like how scepticism basically swapped atheism for being anti-feminism. I've talked about Western chauvinism with people like Sam Harris and new atheism in general. Just general criticisms of why far-right types often like these guys. But I thought it'd be fun today to kind of look at the trajectory of both of these guys because they are pretty linked together. Like skepticism is in part inspired by new atheism. And why so many of these guys either abandon skepticism, like Fun Foot, the amazing atheist, and to a less degree, Armour the Skeptic, and why the others, like Sargon of Akkad, transition skepticism into basically just anti-SJW-ism, which is just being against anything on the left, anything progressive, to a really irrational degree. I'm gonna plug my socials and Patreon for about a minute, so skip that if you're not interested. But before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I wanna build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if you know you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you wanna join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit, those links in the description. And if you wanna follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. Thanks so much for the 35K, I finally built the pyramid. It might be a bit weird because I've recorded videos in bulk, so there might be some videos where it's not there. But help me get to 40K, I'm targeting that by, I guess, autumn, let's do it before my birthday in November and we can get a new chocolate orange. Also on a regular week, I also live stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday and I archive those on the Cabernacle Extra. There was a really good article on Salon, which I felt like was inspired by my own work because it covered a lot of the same points as me. But I do want to use it for a bit of context. Now, at the start of every video about new atheism, I normally talk about how they were formed and why they got popular. And this article does a good job. And I normally talk about, you know, Samuel Huntington's Clash of Civilizations, this piece that seemingly predicted the West's problem with the Islamic world and how it sort of vindicated a lot of these new atheists and how they jumped aboard this sentiment. I've outlined this in way more detail in other work, so I don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to go over that stuff. If you want to hear me talk about the origins of new atheism a bit more, watch one of the other videos. But just going into the Salon article called Godless Grifters Have a New Atheist Merge with the Far Right, again, very similar to a video I made last year. Uh, Phil Torres writes, it was inspiring, really inspiring. I remember watching a clip after clip of Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens debating Christians, Muslims, exposing the faith-based beliefs in superstitious nonsense, unsupported by empirical evidence, often delivered to self-proclaimed prophets by supernatural beings via suspicious channels of private revelation. Not that Harris, Dawkins and Hitchens were saying anything particularly novel, the inconsistencies and contradictions of religious dogma are apparent even to small children. Why did God have to sacrifice his son for our sins? Does Satan have free will? And how can the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be completely separate entities but also one and the same? The new atheist movement which emerged from the best-selling books of these authors was the intellectual community that many of us 15 or so years ago were desperately looking for, especially after 9-11, which, like I was saying, seemed to confirm Samuel P. Huntington's infamous Clash of Civilizations thesis. As Harris once put it, with many of us naively agreeing, we are at war with Islam. And then the article goes on to say, new atheism appeared to offer moral clarity. It emphasized intellectual honesty and embraced scientific truths about the nature and workings of reality. It gave me immense hope to know that in a world overflowing with irrationality, there were clear thinking individuals with sizable public platforms willing to stand up for what's right and true, to stand up for sanity in the face of stupidity. So I think that sums up the appeal of new atheism quite nicely. And I myself was quite attracted to new atheism back when I was like 17, 18, 19, when I was just starting university. And why it appealed to me is that, that it felt like 
there were no prominent atheist voices around. And, of course, atheism has been a big thing. It was a big thing with communist movements and communist countries. But to me, it felt like there was no, like, Western atheists who were fighting back against religion as a whole. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, all this stuff. It felt like there was no one doing that. And that's why these people became so prominent, because it seemed like these were the only guys doing this. And people like Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins in particular obviously did a lot of good work arguing against Christian dogma. And that's what was really important for me with these two guys. Of course, before 9-11, people weren't thinking about Islam as much in the West. They were primarily thinking of Christianity, particularly in America, where a very conservative strain of Christianity existed, especially compared to other Western countries. These guys were firebrands in some regards, and if you read Sam Harris's early work about Islam and stuff, that is still quite problematic when you look back at it. But in the context of the day, it felt like these were the only people who were, you know, these liberal people who were criticizing religion, and there weren't many of them around. So that's why I was initially drawn to them. I remember saying to my girlfriend that I always didn't like Richard Dawkins. I always thought he just didn't come across like a nice guy. He was always a bit of a dick about it. You know, I've seen that clip of him talking to Brandon Flowers from The Killers about Mormonism and the way he just, you know, derides people as stupid for believing in religion, especially when they're easy targets. Like he's saying this to like school children and, you know, the lead singer of a band. It's not like you're having a debate with like a Muller or something. So I never liked that type of it. And it did feel like in some regards, for a lot of people involved in that community, it was about showing how smart you are. And it was about getting, you know, personal satisfaction out of that rather than fighting organized religion as an institution. And as someone who's very left leaning, I'm an atheist. But as I've gotten older, I've realized my main problem is capitalism, not religion, but organized religion as a tool of oppression. I still believe needs to be dismantled in its own way. You know, you've seen about the Catholic Church and how they've treated indigenous communities in Canada and all that's coming to light right now. This stuff also happened in places like Ireland and England, across the world which is controlled by Catholics. This goes back, this abuse, all the way to like churches in the 1500s. And the more you read into organized religion like Catholicism, you see how ridiculous it is as this organization. And that can be completely separate from the religious beliefs. At the time, there's been like three different popes because every major power in Europe wanted a different pope so they'd have someone in the Vatican who was more on their side. But just like the YouTube skeptic community, these guys swapped atheism for anti-SJW, anti-left politics. But these elements were always here. So let's just finish up with the new atheist segment and how they were kind of primed to be anti-SJWs. Basically, a lot of the grievances with Hitchens, Harris and Dawkins was we could not have a rational debate about things like Islam post 9-11 because liberals didn't want to appear racist. Leftists did not want to appear as racist. And in some regards, they were just as bad as the fundamentalists because it would be on us when Islam destroys the West. And Sam Harris even talks about this lately, talking about you know refugees coming to Europe and destroying the demographics and Islam taking over and everything like this, this fear mongering. And they blame people like us. And things like 9-11 are also on leftists because we never took Islamic terrorism seriously. And often these guys ignore the geopolitical elements, the historic elements of things like that. So they like to blame the left. Now, scepticism was kind of born out of this new atheist wave. And most skeptic channels were also big atheist channels. And they made lots of videos on atheism. So The Amazing Atheist and Thunderfoot are the oldest ones. Also have Sargon of Akkad and you have Armored Skeptic and maybe like adjacent to that, you know, Chris Raygun and Shoe on Head. But there's different phases of the skeptic community. So I mentioned Thunderfoot and The Amazing Atheist. So I'd say because he's the oldest, it's the first phase. Now, these guys started off as mainly atheist channels, and I looked as part of work in my previous video, did these guys also start off as anti-feminist channels? I could only find one anti-feminist video in 2009 from The Amazing Atheist. Hello, I'm The Amazing Atheist, and today's video is about feminism. That's right, feminism. Most women don't call themselves feminists, but 
a lot still do, even though the goals of feminism have already been accomplished. Feminists say all sorts of crazy things. They say men are pigs, you know, and uh, some even say men are a biological accident. But I don't really care about any of that stuff because it's really just amusing to me. I don't really care about hate groups as long as they don't get too big. The only real problem I have with feminists today, you know, you can attack my gender, that's fine, but Leave pornography alone. So not the most academic video, but I looked around at the time and there isn't really much more. The anti-leftist content with the skeptic community really ramped up in about 2013 and with Gamergate emerging, these two guys made a lot more content on anti-feminism. So I'll play you some of their clips now. There was a bit of a fiasco at the University of Toronto when a group of radical feminists pulled a fire alarm in order to stop a men's rights seminar in progress at the university. You can see a large group of protesters yelling in the hallway just outside the MRA group's meeting while campus security muddles around like a lost child, powerless to get them to stop disrupting. The fire alarm then goes off and the feminists cheer like banshees ecstatic that they've used bully tactics to silence the opposing point of view. I think I finally figured out modern day feminism. It's, it's basically, there's a lot of these girls and women who are completely unlikable who are shrill and annoying and evil. And they think that no one likes them because they're women. But really, no one likes them because they're horrible. People. And that just uh, strengthens their victim complex. It just, you know, validates it in their minds. Like, see how everyone hates us? That's proof that women are oppressed. No, women are not oppressed. Feminist Frequency's ability to find patterns that don't exist is rivaled only by her ability to miss the most important and bloody obvious pattern of all. These games were not made to keep feminists happy. These games were not designed to subjugate women. These games were designed to be fun to play and thereby make a profit for the designer. And this is the point that seems to have completely eluded feminist frequency during her 20 minute analysis. You know, I frequently sit here and think about the way things are going and what could be done to make things more impactful. And to be quite honest, I've been sickened by the recent performance of the secular community. The problem is that many in leadership positions have managed to get themselves bullied or controlled into this bullshit PC appeasement position by people who are conspicuous in that they proudly label themselves as feminists. Folks who find t-shirts like this offensive enough to reduce them to tears. So as much as I totally disagree with everything they're saying, at this point it wasn't yet a massive grift. They hadn't abandoned atheism for just general anti-SJW-ism, and we'll get to the split between the skeptic community. But I think this is still the birth of this style of content because what they see here with the Anita Sarkeesian stuff and anti-feminism stuff is that their new atheist audience, which they've cultivated, and the skeptic community doesn't only like them criticizing religion, they also like them criticizing feminism a lot as well. Because while in my mind, being an atheist is about criticizing organized religion, organized power and stuff like that, combined with criticizing how ridiculous religion is, for these guys, it was more about criticizing how ridiculous religion is and it's not factually accurate. So they would paint feminism as not factually accurate. So to their audience and them, it was a logical step in that direction we're going to debunk religion and feminism because they're both pure fantasy. And like the Amazing Atheist said, the goals of feminism have already been achieved, apparently. So this is around 2013-14. And while they were pumping out videos that were anti-feminist and about how feminism was ruining atheism and stuff, that was still like their genuine criticisms. But I feel like this period, they all realize this content is very popular. Now we're getting to 2014, so I wanna take it back to the new atheist academic intellectuals. Now why I'm doing this is because this was the year of ISIS's blitzkrieg when ISIS announced themselves on the world stage by taking over territory in Iraq and Syria and some of you might be younger but before ISIS really announced themselves in 2014 it would just be about you know car bombs in Shia neighborhoods in Iraq because in 2011 Obama pulled the US troops out 
so it felt like there was just more sectarian violence, but there wasn't really a name for it. ISIS was not common. Thankfully, I remember this stuff because I, I've always loved keeping up with the news. But then in 2014, this was really scary. This new group that was just, you know, destroying everything in its path. And while the anti-Islam sentiment in New Atheism had cooled a bit, this really brought it back. And the new atheists were now looked upon as thought leaders once again, just like they were, you know, in the Iraq war post 9-11. Everyone was looking to them again. And Sam Harris had his moment in the sun in this period because he was on Bill Maher a lot. Bill Maher was backing him up. He had that infamous Ben Affleck clip. I've made a whole video about how Ben Affleck was vindicated. But this was during the ISIS blitzkrieg and just afterwards. And this is why these guys got more popular because it's like, Sam Harris was always right. If we found a, a totally isolated people on a desert island and we gave them uh, the, the canon of Islam, the Quran, the Hadith, the biography, biography of Muhammad, uh, and said, here, this is all you need to know, okay? Live by these principles. And then we came back in a thousand years and they were living like ISIS. There would be not much basis for surprise. Now, if we gave them the Pali canon, the canon of the, of the teachings of the Buddha, and came back in a thousand years and they were living like ISIS, there'd be reason to be flabbergasted. Richard Dawkins was always right about Islam. And we've just had that reminder. And then of course you have the terrorist attacks in France in 2015 and in London in 2017. And then you have the refugee crisis from the Arab Spring, the civil wars in Syria and Libya, and now a new one from Iraq and Syria because of ISIS, and you have loads more refugees coming to Europe. Now, of course, this was used in far-right propaganda by many far-right parties throughout Europe, but was also pounced upon by the new atheists to talk about demographic shifts and thousands of, in Sam Harris's words, illiberal people flooding into Europe and why this will lead to the death of Europe and Western values. And the social attitudes in the Muslim community that are at odds with values that really should be, really must be non-negotiable, like free speech and women's rights and gay rights. And in particular, we're worried about protecting them from many of the illiberal people who have been pouring into Europe. In this one, we more or less fully agree on what we're against. And what we're against is Western civilization committing suicide. And this is where these guys really expose themselves as Western chauvinists. And this is also the period where Sam Harris and others like him would branch out. They were no longer just talking with atheists. Now they are talking with people who are on the far right. Far right conservatives, mainly secular conservatives like Douglas Murray, for example. Sam Harris is a big podcast of him. And basically what united them all was being anti-Islam. So why they are still talking about religion to some respect, the new atheists, they're pivoting away from critiques of religion more to weird critiques about demographics, Western values that you can't characterise properly. And... Sam Harris would also go on to be, you know, very anti-Black Lives Matter when it emerged and very anti, you know, SJW generally. So this is sort of the period where he uses this new clout to branch out into other topics of conversation. It's now no longer about atheism and religion. It's about general Western values and the left because the left do not want to have these conversations. The left will shout you down as a racist. The left are all like Ben Affleck. They won't take you seriously and they need to wake up or before we know it, the West will be destroyed. So this is in the 2014 to 17 period. Now, this is also when I'd say you get the second wave of like skepticism and you have people like Sargon of Akkad, Shoe on Head, Armored Skeptic, Chris Reagan, loads of other people. Now these guys get really prominent. It's transitioned from the old skepticism, which was like debunking things with facts and logic, to just culture war hysteria. It still had the feminist element, the anti-feminist element. Nobody's denying that there isn't still sexism out there. What we're denying is that there's a systemic issue of sexism in society. But for some reason, feminists are unable to discern the two concepts from each other. But with Trump especially galvanizing this movement, it was basically turned into this platform 
for pushing often far-right arguments and far-right figures. And while these guys were still atheists and everything like that, they became more rabidly anti-left. So you guys might not believe me from what I'm saying. Maybe you guys didn't grow up on YouTube or maybe you're a bit younger. But to prove what I'm saying, I found a really good video by Thunderfoot talking about why he is quitting skepticism and being part of the skeptic community. Now, for me and the anti-social justice warrior movement in the skeptic community, it all started off well. Hell, I should know, I was one of the first people there. However, as time's gone on and it's got more popular, people have started progressively trying to inject more of their ideologies and narratives into the anti-social justice warrior movement. You know, like if you're anti-Trump, then you must be pro-social justice warrior. Like there couldn't be anyone who would ever think the president game show host was going to be a bad idea, who also thought that social justice warriors were talentless vermin. And now I've hit a similar point with the skeptical community here on YouTube. You see, there was this guy called the Skeptical Feminist, and he was the president of the Western Colorado Atheists and Freethinkers, who, by all accounts, got high on mushrooms, got paranoid, and thought that one of the girls who he lived with was trying to kill him. So he shot her and she died of her wounds in the car lot later. The guy who did the shooting himself was, by all accounts, a jerk. A hardcore jerk. But there's nothing to suggest that him being a feminist had anything more to do with this than him being the president of an atheist society. So how did YouTube's skeptical community deal with this? Uh, well, a feminist got triggered. Yeah. For too the soon? final time, for the it's last time. Soon, as, as I said before, like too soon is literally five seconds before it happens. That's when it's too yeah. soon. So as well, but I, I want to say, can I can I praise the shooter really quick? <laughs> you've hit the point where you've been pretending to be shiplords for so long that you've become them in reality. Now, the last time I watched one of Sargon of Akkad's videos, he was going on about fighting the culture war. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's tough life, man. When you've got fucking half a million subscribers and you're fighting like this culture war. But uh, like you said with the candid stuff, you do understand that there is, um, and as this comment points, a certain zeitgeist in the shared audience that we have among the people we're talking about who expect a higher standard of ethic. But it's just something, an idea I want to filter down to people that I've noticed and I'm, I'm looking at it in other communities and you can see these like huge fucking rifts and... Dude, you're one of the biggest figures in this community of yours. Arguably the biggest, getting about twice the traffic that my channel does. Preaching about higher ethical moral standards, while callously using a tragic shooting to push an agenda before the body was even cold. Yeah, I don't know what sort of community you want to lead here, but I want nothing to do with it. And you can watch the whole video, and I don't agree with loads of things he says, but it at least comes across, he was very genuine with his beliefs and criticism and skeptics morphed into people who were all doing it for a culture war grift. So in that video, you see him call out Sargon of a card specifically for saying he's going to fight this culture war, how they're making jokes about someone who was killed and a guy who was a, you know, described feminist and atheist killing this woman and how funny that is. And he's talking about how it's really jumped the shark and now it's not about, you know, being rational and having ethics and debunking things with facts and logic. It's simply a toxic community where loads of people support Donald Trump and where people are doing it for a culture war grift. They've essentially swapped being skeptics, debunking things, being skeptical of institutions of power, debunking things with facts and logic. They've swapped that for a culture war, which they don't even understand what side they're really on. So that's why you get people with messy politics in this stuff. And then you have people like the Amazing Atheist also pivot their content, so now he's pretty openly left-leaning. And then you also have people like Shoe on Head and Chris Reagan, who I wouldn't consider like the most leftist people in the world. But these guys have sort of been pushed more to the left because of Bernie Sanders, all three of them, where they no longer just primarily made content about how stupid feminists were in general. And even Armored Skeptic, who was this massive anti-feminist, big on anti-Black Lives Matter, he changed his content as well and he pivoted away from that stuff. So what you have essentially is a split where people like Thunderfoot and The Amazing Atheist 
going one direction and where the culture war grifter is going another direction. And I made a video about the quartering's origins and he said he attended these conferences with people like Sargon of Akkad. And I said, anti-SJW nerd channels are the successor to the skeptic community. And Sargon of Akkad used to collab with the quartering as well. So I feel like that is the direction these guys went. They essentially put criticizing religion in the bin for anti-SJW YouTube channels. And that's how they jumped on the culture war themselves. They are the guys who then made these nerd channels that would just be great tools for indoctrinating people in far-right radical politics. But this is a nice, you know, final segue into what new atheism is today. Because you have these new atheist skeptics that have become these anti-SJWs. And then you have these other new atheist skeptics who have either moved away from that content completely or become more left-leaning and don't really discuss religion anymore. And then you have the new atheists like Sam Harris who will wade into the culture war completely. And then to a lesser extent, you'll have Richard Dawkins as well. So the big one I've covered before is Sam Harris platformed Charles Murray, the author of The Bell Curve. And he not only platformed him, he seemed to agree with a lot of his stuff, even though the bell curve has been widely debunked, about this intrinsic link between IQ and race. Essentially saying that black people are genetically less smart than white people. And it either totally ignores or massively downplays economic factors, access to education, access to all that stuff in favour of this pseudoscience. People don't want to hear that intelligence is a real thing. People don't want to hear that a person's intelligence is in large measure due to his or her genes. And that there seems to be very little we can do environmentally to increase a person's intelligence, even in childhood. It's not that the environment doesn't matter, but genes appear to be 50 to 80 percent of the story. People don't want to hear this. And they certainly don't want to hear that average IQ differs across races and ethnic groups. And as part of his culture war, Sam Harris believed that people wouldn't take Charles Murray seriously because they're trying to be too politically correct. Not that they fundamentally disagreed with what he was saying. Now to take it back to the Salon article from the start, I like this article a lot because it outlines each like new atheist figure and how they jump off the deep end. So with Sam Harris, this is what it says. It says, arguably the progenitor of new atheism, Harris for me was one of the more entertaining atheists. More recently though, he has expanded a lot of time and energy vigorously defending the scientific racism of Charles Murray. He believes that IQ is a good measure of intelligence. He argued to Josh Sepps during a podcast interview, not only that black people are less intelligent than white people, but that this is because of genetic evolution. He is consistently given white nationalists a pass while arguing that Black Lives Matter is overly contentious and has stubbornly advocated profiling Muslims or anyone who looks like he or she could be conceivably Muslim at airports. When Harris believes he's right about something, it becomes virtually impossible to talk him out of it, no matter how many good arguments, expert opinions, or hard data presented to him. Like Donald Trump, he's pretty much unteachable. Harris has also partly blamed the election loss of Hillary Clinton on safe spaces, trigger warnings, and new gender pronouns. He released a private email exchange with Ezra Klein without Klein's permission, and I covered that in my last uh, video about this stuff and once suggested that new atheism is male dominated because it lacks an extra estrogen vibe. His primary focus these days is boosting moral panic over SJWs, political correctness and wokeism, which he apparently believes pose a dire threat to Western civilization. Consequently, Harris has become popular among right wingers. Again, I've made a whole video on this and the sentiment of solidarity appears to be mutual. For example, he's described Ben Shapiro as being committed to the rules of intellectual honesty and to the same principles of charity with regard to other people's positions, which is odd given that Shapiro is a pathological liar who routinely misconstrues his opponents in the service of a racist, misogynistic, climate-denying agenda. Going on to Richard Dawkins, once a heavyweight within the world of evolutionary biology, Dawkins energized atheists the world over with his book, The God Delusion. Over time, though, it became increasingly clear that he's neither an adult in the room nor a particularly nice guy, like I was saying earlier. For some bizarre reason, he obsessively targeted a Muslim teenager in Texas who was arrested after a homemade clock he brought to school was wrongly thought to be a bomb, if you remember this stuff. He also flipped out over what came to be called Elevator Gate, which began with Rebecca Watson calmly asking men to be thoughtful and considerate about how they make women feel at conferences. For example, in the enclosed space of an elevator, 
This resulted in a flood of rape and death threats directed towards Watson while Dawkins mocked the situation by writing a shocking letter addressed Muslima in which the first line was stop whining will you. More recently he's made it clear that he isn't bothered by the allegations against Krauss and posted seemingly anti-trans comments on Twitter. When asked why Twitter has caused him so much trouble, he claims, I love truth too much. So the article has a nice conclusion that says, to conclude, let me bring things full circle. At least some studies have shown that to quote Phil Zuckerman, secular people are markedly less nationalistic, less prejudiced, less anti-Semitic, less racist, less dogmatic, less ethnocentric, less closed-minded, and less authoritarian than the religious people. It's a real shame that new atheism now swallowed up by the intellectual dark web in the far right, turned out to be just as prejudiced, racist, dogmatic, ethnocentric, closed-minded, and authoritarian as many of the religious groups they initially deplored. In the case of the skeptic community, it's really easy to see why the division happened. It's because you have both really toxic elements and also people who are just straight up grifters. They realize this Anita Sarkeesian anti-feminist content was very profitable in terms of views. And pivoting away from that, just general anti-leftism became massive. Anti-SJW content really came out of this era and it became increasingly popular through the Trump era. And sadly, it's still extremely popular today. I know more people are waking up to how ridiculous it is, but it is so popular. Channels like Geeks and Gamers, The Court Ring, and there are like millions of copycats. People still love this stuff and it's very depressing. Whereas with the new atheist types, they're not as united, really. And I guess they are like more academic. It still feels like with people like Sam Harris, a bit of a grift and a bit of an attempt to stay relevant. Like you're this neuroscientist who wrote some stuff about religion that was interesting. Doesn't mean we really care about your opinion on every single thing, but this guy talks about every single thing. And it seems like he and Dawkins have often abandoned their atheism to ally with people who are extremely religious and nationalistic, and it feels like the people they may have criticized like 25 years ago are now their best pals. So I guess the main point of it, nearly everyone who was in the skeptic or new atheist community has sold out. They dropped criticism of organized religion and religious dogma for culture war, for waging a culture war, for being a part of the far right side of the culture war. Like, I don't know what Sam Harris thinks of critical race theory, for example. I wouldn't be surprised if he's totally against it though. Do you know what I mean? It feels like you can predict the positions of these people. And it's not surprising he thinks Ben Shapiro is an honest actor who's worth taking seriously. And it's not surprising at all. And then of course you have like the YouTube pipeline of these skeptics to the far right as well. So let's just say it's good that a lot of us have seen how bad new atheism is, but it's sad because I think people would still take a lot of these guys seriously because they used to have something that was at least interesting to hear, a perspective that maybe you didn't hear so much. But now you might have older people who still listen to them on everything and you're going to have like a really weird mix of politics where you could be like a massive atheist, but then you're listening to people like Sam Harris platform awful, awful racists or just people who are extremely religious. So that is the slow and sad death of skepticism and new atheism, which has really just transformed into anti-SJW politics. Let me know about your own experience of this stuff. I'd be really interested to hear. I always get some great comments about people who either like fell down an alt-right pipeline or just became like pretty bigoted from listening to people like this and then eventually came out of it, which is obviously good news. If you want to follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to join our communities, Discord and my subreddit in the description. If you want to support my work, stuff like this is demonetized, please check out my Patreon. And if you know you're feeling generous, please become a patron yourself. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.